좀 그런 시간 그래서 제가 좀 바빠가지고 그렇게 홍보를 못하고 어, 이 LA 동포사에서 가장 중요하다고 생각되시는 중요하다고 생각되시는 우리 귀빈들을 오늘 모셨습니다. 우리 오렌지 청소년 대표에서 오렌지 분들 우리 앤드루가 앤드루 앤드루 씨 같은 경우 오아에서까지 이렇게 오셨고요. 그래서 어, 와주셔서 감사드리고요. 그리고 일단은 어, 간단하게 우리 앤드루 씨께서 이번에 이제 우리 이민자의 꿈을 실은 기차 여행에 대해서 간단하게 어떻게 시작됐고 어떤 과정을 통해서 이제 저희가 DC까지 가는지 좀 얘기를 좀 해주시겠습니다. 우리 앤드루 씨한테 Give it up for Andrew. Um, I'm here to explain the uh, Dreams Across America tour, and um, this is the first page. So, um, the purpose of the Dreams Across America tour was a public awareness campaign to humanize the issues of immigration reform. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when you see it on TV. They talk about, you know, like 4410 or something, some crazy number, and some people don't understand that. So the purpose of this campaign was to go a uh, national journey from four different cities to Washington, D.C. By, by train and let them know about, like, the human aspect of how immigration affects families. Um, the goal that we had set out for the Dreams Across America tour was to inform the public and our elected officials of the true stories of immigration, how it doesn't affect maybe like a lot of people think maybe just Mexicans jump over the border or something like that, but it really affects Korean Americans as well. And, um, to dispel myths about immigration, how it affects all Americans. Like for me, example, like I'm an American, I'm an American citizen, but it still affects me in a bad way. And to like and to me and and uh, let our elected officials know the need for humane and just immigration laws in this country. Um, there are four different trains started from uh, Los Angeles, Miami, Boston, and Richmond, and they stopped in San Antonio, uh, Tucson, Chicago, New York City, Philadelphia, and Toledo, and picked up uh, a total of 105 dreamers. Um, these 105 dreamers came to share the stories of thousands upon thousands of other Americans and uh, immigrants who um, weren't able to go to this and just to speak out for them. And um, out of the 105 dreamers, NACAS had included 11 Asian Pacific Islander Americans. Out of those 11, five were Korean American. Um, there's me from Toledo, Ohio, Kevin from New York City, um, Grandma Kim from Los Angeles, California, uh, Reverend Mihe Reed from Chicago, and Kim Yu from Houston. Um, I'll start my personal experiences on the train. Um, I mean, it's always been a tough experience for me, but when I got on the train, I was really astonished by uh, all the other stories of what other people went through. And I mean, it was really shocking because, um, like, I always thought I'd been through a lot, but it seemed like these people had been through so much more about, there was this one Polish guy who uh, had his family deported about a couple of days before he actually went on this tour. There was a guy from Iraq who was trying to bring his wife over for the past six, um, three years, but he came. Uh, he keeps ca calling all of the agencies and they keep saying deny, deny. And um, basically what happened with my story was um, my parents came over here to Toledo, Ohio in 1984. Um, I was born in 1990 and um, from 1984 to 1995, my dad studied at the University of Toledo. Um, he studied mechanical engineering. He graduated with that in 95. We went to Korea for about six to seven months, and then we came back. Um, he decided when he came back that he wanted to go to a Michigan language school. But the UT office said, since you, already degree, since you already graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering, you should just go to, um, back to UT because your English is already pretty good. Um, he went to UT, but the thing that didn't happen is his I-20, which is his form to live here, never got transcripted back to the University of Toledo. So from there, he was kind of um, in trouble. And then in 2000, he got his I-140, which was his permission to work here. So from there, he figured out that maybe since his work permit was OK, then he could actually live here and everything was all right. Um, on February 14, 2005, though, um, my mother was picked up by ICE and Toledo police officers. 
Um, she was held in jail for six months. She couldn't get out at all. And on August 11th, they decided to go back to Korea. And they've been there since, and I've been trying to get them back. So. That's why I went on this tour to try to get my parents back and to, um, I don't know, be a voice for the Korean American people. Um, so Andrew just talked about a story about the Polish guy, Tony. We actually have his video that we'd like to share with you. It's just a few minutes long. Tony. Tony. Um, this is the website? Mm -hmm. This is the website, dreamsacrossamericaonline.org. No.
Olympus in Polish. We love you very much. Yash and Brian. I forgot to give her something. I forgot to give it some people just for fair. So you know there are you know there can you imagine like a hundred and five people with um, some really amazing stories and also um, all fighting for uh, fighting for the rights of immigrants and um, we also have here today Kimi Bokarmani or Grandma Kim um, who was also on the train and um, if we could um, welcome Kimi Bokarmani here today to also tell her story about what it was like on the train.
내, 나는 직접 내 관계에 무슨 뭐 추방당하고 뭐 그런 내 식구에 없지 않은 나는 6.25 전쟁을 겪은 사람 유, 학생들 6.25 모를 거예요 예? 6.25 전쟁 모르지요 우리 한국이 38선이라는 게 지도가 허리가 절반을 잘라졌어요 그 때문에 어느 날 6.25 전쟁이 일어나게 해주고 가족이 하루아침에 생이별하게 됐다고 그래서 이북에 못 가게 됐어요 그런 입장이 때문에 그 가족이 헤어진 데 이거 얼마나 슬픈 비극인가 그걸 내가 느끼고 이게 남의 일이 아니야 남의 일이 아니고 다 우리 우리 부모 형제고 한 회밀이다 생각하고 그런 입장에서 내가 거길 간 거예요 갔는데 그 전에 세 번씩 워싱턴에 가서 이런 문제 가지고 가서도 어 보좌관만 만났지 직접 의원은 못 만났어 이번에는 직접 만났다고 직접 만나서 이게 여기에 대한 우리가 얘기를 했다고 가족이 헤어진다는 게 얼마나 슬픈 비극인가 나는 그런 내가 체험 경험을 했거든 유괴 전쟁 때문에 그래서 내가 여기 대표로 왔다 그러니까 다시 가족이 재교라고 하고 문제가 다시 만나야 되고 이렇게 앤드류 좀 같이 얼마나 슬픈 비극이요 어느날 가정이 행복하게 산다가 하루아침에 세프레이 됐다고 얼마나 비, 비참해요 이런 문제가 안 일어나도록 이 정치가들이 이 법을 좀 그렇게 그 악법이지요 이 정치가들 하는 악법이라고 그 악법을 거치고 헤어진 가족들을 다시 재결을 할수 있고 빨리 올수 있도록 이런 문제 그 문제 때문에 여러 사람한테 알리고 그렇게 갔는데 가는 도중에 그 기차 안에서 무슨 일이 일어났나 하면은 한 일주일 일주일 동안 가는 동안에 모든 사람들이 그냥 그 기차 안에서 꼬부리고 막 새우 잠을 자 응. 새우 잠을 자고 식당에 가서 비닐 보쟁이 그거 하나 여기다 땅바닥에 그 화장실 앞에서 그걸 뒤집어 쓰고 자는 사람도 있고 네. 그런 걸 보기 때문에 난 특별히 나이 많은 할머니라고 침대를 줬는데 내가 사양했다고 아나 나 사양 같이 고생해야지 사양했는데 나중에는 가게 됐는데 내가 잠을 못 잤어 세 시간밖에 못 잤는데 그 잠이 한 시간 자고 또복그 기차 안에 왔다 갔다 해보면 모두 꼬버리고 막 이러고 자는데 마음이 아팠어 내가 아팠어 응. 그렇게 하고 어떤 멕시칸 할머니는 뭐이 이 얘기 다 하면 너무 눈물 없이는 못봐 어떤 멕시칸 할머니가 어 손, 여덟 살 여덟 살 하고 열 살짜리 손녀딸을 대, 걔가 어디서 탔나? 텍사스 어디서 타서 중간에서 탔어 아리조나 아, 아, 두산 어, 아리조나에서 탔어요 그 할머니하고 만나게 해주 어머니가 이제 얼마 있다 추방된대 걔들 어머니가 여덟 살열살 나는 딸이 어머니가 추방된대 이런 문제 뭐또 애들이 전 같은 문제 뭐 전부 그런 사람들이야 얼마나 슬픈 비극이야 그 얘기를 뭐 일일이 다 들을 순 없지만은 눈물 없이 못 들어 이 길게 이런 문제 해주고 갔는데 이게 좀 우리가 원하는 그대로는 안 됐지만은 이게 시작이야 계속 이 일을 투쟁을 해야 계속 해야 된다고 이거 시작이라고. 응. 투쟁하지 않으면 일이 안, 안 이루어져. 이루어질 수가 없어. 계속 해야 돼. 우리가 뭐 다음 젊은 사람들이 이어서 계속 해야 된다. 예, 이런 문제가. 응. 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 외계나 하면 일반 사람들이 이 문제를 오해하고 있는 사람들, 반대하는 사람도 들어 있고, 극소수지만은 반대하는 사람도 있고, 그런데 이걸 이 사람들이 논리 알려줘야 돼. 인식을 시켜야 된다. 네. 이게 얼마나 중요한가. 그래서 힘을 모아야 된다. 네. 그 사람들 알려줘야 된다. 그래서 우리가 이렇게 한 거예요. 이 모든 사람들이 이일 때문에 참 수고 많이 하고, 많은 시간을 허비하고, 애 많이 쓰고, 모든 단체에서 많이 도와주고, 그런 도구를 갖댔는데, 지금 현재 안 됐지만은, 이거 계속 이게 좀 젊은 청년들이 힘을 합쳐서 이 일을 자꾸 해야 된다. 네, 감사합니다.
on me that we have here. Um, we're also, we also have today uh, Fermin Vasquez, who was another dreamer on, um, a dreamer who also boarded from the Los Angeles train. So let's all welcome Fermin. So for me, could you tell um, the folks who are here today, they're really um, interested in knowing, um, you know, about a little bit about yourself, you know, what what made you get on this train, um, what was it like on the train, and, um, I don't, you know, anything you think um, that was really just... Started my second year at Cal State Los Angeles, um, I majored in political science. Um, I'm originally from El Salvador. And so my parents came as a result of the Civil War during the 1980s. Um, and so what happened was that, you know, a lot of people were being killed. And so, like, um, there were not enough jobs and stuff like that. And so my mom um, decided to come to the U.S. Um, and I stayed with an aunt when I was five years old. And then... After that, so I was separated from my mom because she had come here. Um, and then, finally, after like seven years, when I was almost 12, 11, I came to the U.S. Um, to once again reunite with my mom because I hadn't seen her, you know, for seven years. And so, um, I mean, that's why I came here, um, just to see my mom again and because she wanted a better future, or she wants still a better future for me. Um, and she knew that those opportunities were not available in my country. And, and so, you know, we, we came and, and it's not because we wanted to, like we, I didn't want to risk my life crossing three borders, which I did, it's, it's essentially what I did. Um, it was just because, you know, um, social, political, um, and economic forces that, you know, forced people to migrate. And, and then what happened, so I came here, I was in fifth grade, I know in English, so I kind of was. And so I was put like in an all English class um, with no one who spoke Spanish. And so it was kind of hard, you know, um, experiencing that, that um, struggle of not knowing the language and how people make fun of you. And they, they didn't understand, you know. I didn't understand what was going on in the class or anything. Um, but I went through. I went to school. Um, I came here undocumented. Um, my, my mom too. And then, um, just actually, like three months ago, I was able to obtain my residency finally after eight years of being in the United States. Um, so I went to school just like any other kid in middle school and high school. Um, Try to do my best um, to get the best grades and um, you know participate in sports and. Um, academics, took AP classes, um, applied to college, like when in my junior years when I found out, you know, because that, that was a documentary, because you have to take the SAT and you apply to college and stuff like that. Um, but I, you know, I got involved with Chisla um, and they helped me out a lot developing my, my skills, like leadership skills, and just to be involved in, you know, in the immigration rights movement, immigrant rights movement. Um, and so, I, got, I was fortunate enough, you know, I was very worried when I was going to school because I got accepted to several universities and so I didn't have the money to go because I come from a single parent home. And, and so, you know, we don't have the, the economic means to go and to pay for school. And, and so, but I was fortunate enough, you know, through, through the marches last year, during May, May 1st, um, that massive march, I met um, a person who, who was willing to to um, pay for my education. So, like she initiated like a scholarship um, for AB540 students. Um, AB540 students are like students who have been here in the country you know, for more than three years and graduate from high school, but they want to go to college. And and so I got that scholarship. So that's how I I'm, I'm getting my school paid now. Um, but like I said three months ago, I got my, my green card finally. And so my, the, real, the real purpose for me going on the tour was to share my story, an immigrant story of a student who, who came here, you know, who has obeyed all the laws, never got in trouble, but who, who couldn't go to school, who, 
Oh, well, um, the opportunities, my opportunities were limited because of my immigration status. And so I just wanted to share my story with, with the American public and try to persuade them um, to pass uh, immigration reform because a lot of times they're really against us. It's, it's true because they don't know us and they don't know our stories. And they just hear like the media speak about illegal aliens and you know they're taking our jobs and things like that. And so, like the tour, I like that about the tour. Like, we didn't talk about amnesty, we didn't talk about illegal aliens, or even about laws. All we wanted to do was to share our stories and, and who we are, and why we're here, and what our dreams are and aspirations. And so, I really like that about like the approach that they use. You know? Just, just tell your story. Just tell who you are, um, and and don't be afraid. Um, and so, um, it's true, we didn't shower for three days, <laughs> all the way from here, from LA to Chicago. Um, it was like, we were all sticky and stuff. Um, it was kind of nasty. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, it was fun um, talking to all these folks, you know, we had like soccer players from Iraq, national team, and these other students who went to Iraq and fought in the Iraq war and now he came back and he was sharing his story you know, that he came here when he was five years old. And so it was really good, you know, it felt like a community. Um, it was, I had been to the sea before, but there was, this time it was like, it was really an unforgettable experience, like being on the train, you know, all these, all these folks. Um, who really want something to happen. And and it, it's not over yet, you know, even though the media has been saying that um, the bill has been killed, like, this this is a movement, and so, I mean, we're not about a bill, we're not about a piece of legislation, we're about mobilizing people and about educating the community, and about moving forward together. And so, um, I just want to, say that, you know, like, our movement is not dead. That piece of law or legislation could could not pass, and it probably won't. But, you know, that doesn't mean that, that, we, have to, that we have to be, uh, that we have to complain or that we have to stop working um, towards what we want. You know, something better could come. And, and I just encourage all of you, you know, just to, to share your story, like, with, with whoever. Like just tell, just tell them, you know, and, and that's how you, you begin to educate the community and begin to change people's minds and perspectives and so, um, I, I think, oh, it was cool, like, oh, the other thing that was really cool was the diversity on the train. We had like white folks, um, business owners, we had um, Asian folks, um, students, and you know, we had this principal um, also. A system principle, and so, um, and so we had like um, we had African Americans, we had Latinos, so we had like um, people from all different backgrounds, all ages, all occupations, and so that was really cool. Like in DC, we had the press conference, and everybody was going like, you know, we are America, we are America, because it was true. Um, we had like everybody um, from all different um, backgrounds and stuff, so that was very powerful. And that's something that we need to think about also when whenever we have like press events or or, or within our um, um, our struggle, always like bring diversity. And, and, and so like like the immigrant rights movement have been, has been criticized because they always see it as a Latino struggle, but it's really not. You know? um, it's everybody. And, and I think that, um, you know, we, we should um, work together because um, that's how we're going to succeed. Uh, so I guess if you have any questions, uh, I'll be willing to answer them. Thanks so much for being. Um, you know, there's um, a lot of, uh, I think, new people walk, in the, walk into the room. And we didn't also, and you know, why don't we just take a moment before we continue to um, just, you know, say hi and, um, you know, your name and um, maybe your, if you have a relationship with KRC, what that relationship is. Um, so hi, my name is Sukyang. 
I uh, work next door at Nakasek, and um, yeah, that's my really <laughs> and, and I'm a huge KRC supporter. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm an actor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is your second day? You survived, no? You survived. <laughs> My name is Jan, and I'm uh, I'm a huge uh, KRC supporter, too, and an XX supporter, uh, and I'm with uh, Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, so Paula. Thank you. Mm -hmm.